Have you started your medical billing business, but have yet to obtain your first client? In this video, I will share with you some of the steps that I've taken in order to secure my first client for my medical billing business. What's up, everybody? My name is Kat and I am the owner of Superior Medical Consulting. I am a certified professional coder and a medical biller. In today's video, I am going to talk with you about some of the strategies that I have used to secure my first client for my medical billing company. So if you have not followed my journey so far, um, to give you a little background, I am a medical um, coder by profession or credential, but I took the steps um, at the beginning of this year to go ahead and start my medical billing business and um, day one of my medical billing business I had uh, secured my first client I actually had my first client before my LLC was even approved and um, I decided to you know build my client under my LLC rather than just um, billing as a sole proprietor or as a contractor because I had my business up and running um, and so I have a few people that I um, have started out in this whole journey with um, in our billing community that, you know, has DM me or inbox me or even, you know, text me asking me um, for some tips on how to secure their first client. And, you know, um, honestly, there is only really one way to secure a client. But I definitely share with them some of the things that I have done that helped me secure my first client. And it all falls under this umbrella of putting yourself out there. Um, so in order for you to be able to bill for a provider, you have to let them know that your services are available for them. Um, and you do that by just offering, offering your services to them. Um, so in order for me to get prepared to open my medical billing business, I ended up um, taking a business coaching class through um, Kiana Craig at Ask the Biller um, over all, all her social handles. And one of the strategies that she suggests in her class is to offer services for free, um, especially if you're a beginner and also um, solicit your services, um, you know, through various social media groups. And so that was pretty much how I um, got myself out there. Um, that was just one of the ways that she suggested, you know, that you can obtain clients. And, um, but there is a strategy into doing, soliciting your services via social media. Um, and which is what I'm going to explain to you how I did it. Um, when I made the decision that I was going to go ahead and start my medical billing business, um, I've already had been in the field for years. Um, I've been on in medical administration for at least 18 years. I was a biller for two, two and a half, three years. And then I've been a coder for the remaining of my career up until you know, current. Um, so after I, I took the class, um, started my business, um, I had made a goal for myself and I told myself that I was going to, uh, like go ahead and market my company. And by the time my LLC was, you know, approved, I wanted to have my first client and I wanted to start billing as soon as possible. Now, mind you, I didn't know that I was going to get my client as quickly as I did. But it was a goal, a big dream of mine, and I wanted to go out and do it. And I did what I had to do to do that. So um, in Kiana's class, she shows you how to put together a very nice resume. Um, and, and with and the way the resume was structured, it basically highlights your experience. Um, it basically is like your calling card, your sales sheet for yourself to potential clients. And what I would do is on my social media uh, platform of choice, I would join, um, you know, different groups uh, that had providers in those groups that I was, um, you know, that I knew was kind of looking for billing, had billing issues and looking for help with their billing. 
So um, once I was approved in those groups, I will go in a group and I will talk to the providers. I will search for questions about billing, search for questions about insurance, search for questions about processes. And if I felt like that I had value that I can add to, you know, um, their issues, I will go in there and I would answer as many questions as I could give as many resources to back up what I said, um, to back up my claim, to back up my stance and also offer, um, you know, like a little bit personal, but not like too deep, um, uh, counseling or consulting to different providers that was having some issues. So say for instance, a provider will pose a question in the group, like, Hey, I am getting a denial, um, for, you know, this, this CPT code and I'm doing it telehealth. I was just wondering if someone ever had this issue with this certain insurance company, can you help me? And so I will go underneath there and try to ask probing questions to get myself to trying to get to the bottom of why the claim could be denial without having the full picture and also to get the provider into thinking, you know, maybe I should check this, maybe I should check that so that they can help themselves research the denial to me this did a few things one it showed the provider that i was an expert at what i've done what i'm doing i have knowledge i'm familiar with their their type of billing their coding their issue two it gets the um the provider into figuring out how to work a denial and seeing exactly how much work goes into working denials and following up and billing um, and three, it educates the provider so that if they do choose to continue to do their own billing, um, going forward, maybe they won't have this problem again. Or if they talk about, um, you know, this billing with maybe a colleague or a spouse or something that gets them to remember this coder, this biller that had helped them, um, to solve a problem that they had that they didn't just didn't know what to do. So Either way, it gave awareness um, of me and my brand to the provider. Um, and a lot of times that led to providers wanting to DM me and ask me more questions and then eventually um, ask if I offer services. And um, if so, I would go ahead and take the initial cold contact. Now I just created a warm contact and, you know, just continue to talk to that provider to help them, um, along the way. And so, um, with this strategy, I have acquired, um, uh, my first secured my first, um, provider as well as had meetings and, you know, uh, meet just meetings with various, uh, countless other providers, um, that wanted to, that's starting their practice, but hasn't done so yet or that is um, having small issues and just want to, you know, help and would like to know if they can use me as a resource, um, a, a prov providers that um, the practice is just small and they're doing their billing, their sales, but they are planning to expand soon and they know that they're going to need help with their billing. So they, you know, want to know if they can like, you know, follow up with me in the future. Any, either way, those providers f went from cold contacts to now warm contacts. And so, um, but also one of those warm contacts went hot and I secured that provider. So that's pretty much how um, I know for a fact that um, that strategy works. Um, so just to recap, um, I utilize my knowledge and my expertise and i um apply for facebook facebook groups linkedin groups groups on you know any other social medias that you might uh be familiar with maybe you this will probably even work on instagram and um TikTok if you set it up correctly but i entered in these different groups i provide value by answering questions offering resources things of that nature. I'm not being salesy. I'm not soliciting. I'm not just bombarding, offering my services, offering my services. I'm adding value, helping people out, offering to do stuff with them for free, um, offering, you know, to look over their billing and to give them a few minutes of my time in exchange for them getting to know me, them get, 
developing that know, like, and trust aspect, um, turned them into from cold clients to warm clients. And if I, once I continue to show my expertise and my knowledge, eventually a hot client. And I've been billing for my provider for the last six months. Recently, she just asked me if I wanted to take on more responsibilities to bill out more payers for her because she's getting credentialed with more payers. So, of course, that's going to increase my workload, which in turn, hopefully should increase her revenue and to increase my experience and also to increase my revenue. So that is how i um, obtained my first client if you have any questions please um, enter them in the comments below also if you have a medical billing business please enter your name below i would love to see the name of your medical billing business i would love to check out your website um, and if you have any like suggestions or tips that you want to help your fellow medical billing business owners um, to obtain their first client Please enter them below. Let's have the conversation and let's, um, you know, keep going. Um, I am thinking about different other marketing strategies and, you know, keep following the journey. If you are interested in learning about, um, you know, how to market your business further.